about projectiles and specifically horizontally launched projectiles. So let's first of all define what a projectile is. So a projectile is any object that is in motion under the influence of gravity alone. So if you drop a ball right here, gravity acts on it and causes it to accelerate downwards. That's a projectile. If I throw a ball upwards, gravity acts on it and causes the velocity to decrease until it stops and then it moves with a negative velocity that increases. And that's also a projectile. And if I throw a ball up in the air sideways, it is still only acted on by gravity. So a projectile is any object that's moving under the influence of gravity alone. So here's a thought experiment. Imagine I stand at the very top of an 80 meter tall building. So a pretty tall building, taller than we have here in New Pal. And if I take a ball and I let it go, after zero seconds, it will be right where I left it. So the instant my fingers let go, it's right here. After one second, that ball will fall about five meters. And so it'll be right about there. In the next second, it will fall farther. It'll actually fall about 20 meters from the beginning or an extra um, 15 from where it was. A second after that, it will be 45 meters down from where I let go. And a second after that, four seconds later, it's going to hit the ground. So this is what will happen to a ball if we drop it from a building. So the thing we're going to look at today is what happens is, what happens if, instead of dropping it, I throw it sideways at 20 meters per second? Well, the big idea is that what happens sideways, we learned this in lab, what happens horizontally is not affected by what happens vertically. So in one second, it will fall five meters. It'll be as high as this ball, but it will have moved 20 meters to the right. And so it'll be over here. Another second after that, it will fall 15 extra meters. It'll be 20 meters down, so it'll be the same height as this one, but it'll also move 20 meters over, so it'll be there. And a second after that, it will move another 20 meters to the right, and it will fall farther than it did the last second, and so now it's here. And then finally, after four seconds, it'll be down there. So zero seconds, both balls are here. In one second, they both fall the exact same amount. The fact that the red ball, whoops, the fact that the red ball is moving to the right does not affect the rate that it falls. So these guys both fall the same distance every second. It's just that the red ball is moving sideways while it's falling. And we're going to use that idea to solve the problem, okay? So here's the big idea, and you should put this in your toolbox if it's not already there. For horizontal motion, um, for projectile motion, the horizontal motion of the ball, the motion left and right, it's independent of the vertical motion. <coughs> so what the ball is doing up and down is not affected by its horizontal motion. Okay, so we're going to use subscripts Y for the vertical direction, that's up and down. And we're going to use a subscript X for the horizontal direction, that's left and right. So the acceleration of an object in free fall, a projectile, the acceleration in the y direction is just negative g, which is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. The acceleration in the x direction is zero. Something's moving in the x direction. Gravity doesn't change its motion in the x direction. So that's always going to be zero. So we're going to start with a special case of problems where the object is horizontally launched. So if something's horizontally launched, that means you throw it sideways. And if you throw it sideways, which we call horizontally, that means that at the beginning of the problem, it's not moving up or down. So imagine this ball right here. This is horizontally launched. At the beginning of the problem, it's thrown sideways, so it's not moving up or down. If we launch it at an angle like that, that's not horizontal. Or if we throw it downwards, that's not horizontal. But if we launch it sideways, it's a horizontally launched projectile. And if that happens, then this is true. The velocity of the object in the y direction initially is zero. Okay, so we're going to use two subscripts here. V is velocity. The subscript Y means in the vertical direction. And the zero means initially at the beginning of the problem. So this means it's not moving up or down at the beginning of the problem. Okay, and we're going to use that when we solve problems. So we're just going to solve two example problems and go through them step by step. You can always pause the video to take a closer look and to write down what you need to. But here's the idea. 
A marble is rolling along a table and it's going 1.3 meters per second and that's horizontally, so that's how fast it's rolling along the table. The table is 0.7 meters high, and the marble falls off and hits the ground. So here's kind of a diagram of what's happening. Here's the edge of the table right here. The marble's rolling along, and right when the marble leaves the table, the clock starts ticking, and the marble falls. And while it's falling, it's moving to the right. And we want to know how long is it in the air, and how far does it go horizontally. Now, for these problems, we're going to have an x and a y axis. Um, in, the, in the last unit, we said we had to show on the diagram where y was zero because we measured the height of the object from that point. Here we have to know where y and x are zero. So I'm actually going to draw a coordinate system on my diagram. And I'm going to call this point right here the origin. So right here, x is zero and y is zero. Now our variable list looks a little scary, but it's not too bad. In the x direction, we simply have the five variables we always had in unit one. The distance it goes its initial velocity, its final velocity, the acceleration in the x direction, and time. So those are our five variables. We also have those five variables in the y direction. So vertically, this is how far it travels, up or down. This is how fast it's moving up or down at the beginning of the problem. This is at the end of the problem. This is the acceleration vertically, and that's time. So you can see this is just a variable list. It looks like the ones we had from unit one, except we're using subscripts to take care of whether it's in the x or the y direction. Okay? So as we read the problem, we can figure out a couple things. First of all, the initial velocity in the x direction is 1.3. That's how fast it's rolling sideways when it leaves the table. It's how fast it's moving in the x direction here when it leaves the table. We just wrote down in our toolbox that the acceleration in the x direction is always zero. So we're just going to put that in there. And then it's interesting to note that if the acceleration in the x direction is zero, that means the velocity never changes. And so if the initial velocity is 1.3, the final is also 1.3. But that's not going to help us that much um, when we solve this problem. So um, in the y direction, delta y is how far it goes vertically. So it starts here and it ends up down at the ground. And so in the y direction, um, the distance it travels is negative 0.75 because it goes downwards. Because this is horizontally launched, the initial velocity in the y direction is also zero. The final velocity in the y direction we do not know, but we do know the acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.81. So there we go, that's what we know. So here's going to be our general strategy, and this might go kind of fast, so feel free to rewind and watch it again, or stop it and, and, and write down what you need to. We are going to solve the y problem. So this equation from unit one, we're going to solve it for t. So it's in the y direction. We're going to solve this problem here because we can figure out how long it takes the ball to fall from here to the ground. And if we know how long it takes to fall from here to the ground, that'll be the exact same amount of time it takes to fall from here to there because it's moving sideways. So remember, it's sideways motion doesn't affect how it falls. So we're going to solve this equation for t. Now, because the initial velocity in the y direction is zero right here, this term is going to go away. We're not going to need it. So we end up with this equation when I clobber this term right here. I'm trying to solve this thing for t. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 and divide both sides by a. So I multiply both sides by 2 and divide both sides by a. I get this expression right here. Take the square root of both sides, plug in our numbers, and you can try it, and you get 0.391 seconds. So that's the amount of time that expires while the ball is in the air, 0.391 seconds. All right, so once we know how much time the ball is in the air, we can now solve the horizontal problem. So we're going to use the exact same equation we used up here, except we're using it in the x direction. So we're going to have the velocity in the x direction initial, the acceleration in the x direction, and the distance it goes horizontally. In this case, because the acceleration in the x direction is zero, this whole term gets clobbered and our life is pretty easy. All we have to do is solve this equation right here for delta x. And since we don't really need to rearrange it algebraically, we say we're going to evaluate it. So our answer is going to be the delta x, the distance it goes horizontally. So from here to here, that distance is going to be the initial velocity in the x direction times the time. We plug in our numbers and we get 0.508 meters. Okay, so that's an example of how we use this idea 
to solve the problems. The motion horizontally is independent of the motion vertically. So we're going to make one variable list horizontally, one variable list for vertical, and then we're going to solve the y problem for time, and then the x problem for the distance it goes. All right. So that's the general strategy of how we're going to solve problems. Here's another example that's slightly different. I'm going to go through a little faster. I've got a dart and I fire it horizontally and it hits the wall after going six meters across the room. So here's my diagram. I fire the dart right here and it goes horizontally. If there was no gravity, it would go in a straight line and hit right here. But because of gravity, it falls. And the distance it falls is five centimeters or 0 0.05 meters. So I'm going to use that to figure out how long it um, it was in the air and how fast it was going horizontally. So this problem we're trying to find the velocity horizontally. So here's my variable list again. Things I know, I know that it travels a horizontal distance of 6 meters. So delta x right here is going to be 6 meters. I do not know the initial velocity horizontally, but I do know the acceleration horizontally is 0. In the y direction, I know that it falls 5 centimeters, or 0 0.05 meters, and I've got to make it negative because it falls. The initial velocity in the y direction, again, is 0 because it's a horizontally launched projectile. So when you see the words fired horizontally, or launched horizontally, or thrown horizontally, that's your clue that you're going to have 0 for the initial velocity in the y direction. The other thing we know is the acceleration in the y direction is negative g. So just like we did in the previous problem, we're going to solve the y problem for the time. There is no velocity in the y direction initially, so this term goes away. We're going to multiply both sides by 2 and divide both sides by a to get t squared. Take the square root, plug in our numbers, and it takes 0 0.101 seconds for the dart to fly across the room and hit the board. Okay? All right. Once we do that, now we're going to solve for something slightly different. We know the acceleration. We know the time. We know the distance it goes horizontally. We're trying to find the velocity initial horizontally. So we're going to solve this equation, not for delta x, but for the initial velocity horizontally. So we're trying to find v, zero, v in the x initial. Okay? So because the acceleration is zero, we can clobber that term. It makes our life easy. To get this by itself, we divide both sides by t plug in our numbers, and we will get 59.4 meters per second as the initial velocity. So by launching our dart sideways, horizontally, and measuring how far it falls while it went across the room, we can calculate its initial velocity, how fast it was going. All right. So on your problems, the important things you're going to have to remember is make a nice big diagram, and on your diagram, show the origin. Where is x and y zero? So draw an x and a y axis. Fill out your variable list. You're going to have two variable lists. Make them nice and clear and big. Make sure you make nice subscripts so we can tell if it's y or x. And then you're going to use this equation to find t. And once you know t, you're going to solve this equation for usually delta x or the initial velocity. Okay? So that's the idea. All right. So we're going to have some practice problems to solve. This is problem set 4.2.